Thank you to all my partners, everybody that have been a blessing to this ministry. Thank you so much for honoring me and helping me out to get the gospel out, even on YouTube. Thank you so much for all the partners. Bless you. And this is going to really be a blessing to you. Do you understand how much the Father wants to get money to you on earth? It's, it's actually more of a craving and a desire and an ambition for the Father to get money to you. That's why he trains you, he corrects you, he deals with your soul, he deals with your mind, he deals with your relationships, he deals with how you act, how you react, how you think, the information that you have. That's why he mentors you so much because he's actually anticipating to make you rich more than you want to be rich. The Lord already has so much things hidden on earth for you in this life. The powerful thing about it is that there are houses on earth that belong to you that you don't even know about. There, there's cars, there's clothes, there's finances, there's all type of things that belong to you on earth right now that you don't even know about. You don't even know that they're on earth for you. And so being led by the Spirit is so important because the Spirit will lead you to where your money is, your provision is. The Spirit will lead you to where your investors are. The Spirit will lead you to where your work is. Praying in the Spirit allows the financial anointing to be stirred in you because now uh, tongues deals with the mysteries of God and the things that are hidden from you, that are concealed from you, until you invest that time in prayer. And so when you pray in tongues, you open up your soul to be a basket to things that's in the kingdom of heaven that you don't know about. And so you open up a conversation with yourself and the Lord, and he'll introduce you to sowing and reaping. That's why I told you, like when it was when I was dry fasting, not eating or drinking, and when I started really praying in the Holy Ghost for long periods of time that the Father introduced to me the sowing anointing. Saints, I remember one time I was in meditation during the time when I was sowing. And while I was in meditation, um, I saw I was inside of a marketplace with fruits. And when I got inside of the marketplace, I looked over and I saw all these fruits and I wanted to buy the fruits. And when I got to the cash register, it was a black man standing there. Now, now saints, mind you, I'm inside of a vision. Like I'm not sleeping or nothing. I'm just meditating on my bed. I'm laying down meditating and I'm positioning my mind to think about the, the scriptures about provision and things like that. And I come into this vi vision, I'm taken into a market place. I'm seeing all these fruits and they're gigantic fruits. I'm seeing watermelon, all this stuff, mangoes, and they're big in size, like big and gigantic. I'm like, whoa, it was a magnum fruit. <laughs> Don't think about it. Um, and <laughs> And while I was inside of the marketplace, I went to the cash register. It was a black man there. And he handed me $10, it looks like. Now, imagine, you know, when you go to the cash register, you're handing them money to pay for items. He handed me money. And so when I got to the cash register place and the man handed me money, then the Spirit of the Lord told me, supernatural money, supernatural provision. Coming from uncommon places. And at that time, the, the Spirit of God was really intensifying the sowing anointing inside of me as a person. At that time, I wasn't teaching nobody. I was myself. I'm doing it. I'm using the seed. I'm honoring God. I'm, I'm the one doing it myself. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the cross. I'm in, I'm in the cross dimension of denying myself financially. I'm, I'm doing that. And so 
when I had that vision, I snapped back out and I'm, I'm right there laying down. I'm not asleep. It's just an open vision. And then I understood. And from there, from that day, I had, I had several connections in my life and, and they were a continuation of that vision that I had. They would give me money. They would give me opportunities. They would bless me. They would feed me. They were, I remember there was this woman. She would see me and she would leave all type of um, food, grocery. She'll go grocery shopping and pit at my door. And she'll buy me bread and all type of stuff. At that time, I was skinny like a, I was skinny, man, because I, I was doing a lot of fasting at that time and stuff. And she would pit at my door and she would do that like every week. It, it was, it was, saints, it was so powerful. It was so powerful. And so while you're honoring God, he'll send you acts of kindness your way. He'll use people to be nice to you, to encourage you. He'll use people. Like I, I hear a lot of you all tell me your testimony, how people buy you lunch and how people buy things for you and they're nice to you at the workplace and they favor you and give you raises. You can't ignore that. And saints, you got to bring those things before the Lord. Like if you got a raise like three weeks ago or six months ago, you got to go back to the Lord and say, Lord, I remember you gave me this raise like six months ago. I want to tell you, thank you again. That's how you got to treat the Lord in your relationship. You got to show him that you're ready for him to do even more massive things financially and that you're going to acknowledge him in all your ways. You're not going to forget it. You got to keep before the Lord his works. Saints, when, when, when God makes you officially um, manifested wealthy in this life, he's not making you wealthy for you to just take it like nonchalant. You got to be fascinated. Saints, sometimes I get stuff, even if, you are, even if some of you are Bible stuff, I'm constantly revisiting the moment and saying, Father, Father, look at this. This is amazing. And he studies reaction. He studies to see if you're excited. He studies to see if you start casualizing things like, and that's when the spirit of entitlement is so ugly. The spirit of self-entitlement is so ugly because you start, you start losing your charisma, your excitement, your expressions of gratitude. When you get into self-entitlement, you think that you're supposed to eat like that. You're supposed to drive like that. You're supposed to dress like that. And, and now it's, it robs God of a reaction. And so saints, you want to keep yourself as a child. The kingdom of heaven is all about being a child. And you notice children get real excited. They get real excited. When you give a child something that they want, they get real excited. You know, um, I had my daughter... My, I was eating something and it was sweet. And my daughter, she was looking at me and she said, Daddy, uh, can I have some? And I heard the Holy Spirit said, give her some. And then she ate a portion. Then the Holy Spirit said, give her a little bit more. And then she ate that portion. She was so happy. And then the Holy Spirit said, don't give her no more. And saints, then the word of the Lord came to me on how there is a time where God would entrust you with the sweetness of his provision. And he'll give you sweetness of blessing. And he'll give you sweetness of increase. He'll give you sweetness of miracles. But he understands the portion that you can handle. And saints, I'm, I, I want to say this to you because when the word of the Lord came to me, he started explaining this to me. Imagine you don't got the capacity to receive all the sweetness that God has for you. 
because you're underdeveloped. And so he'll give you a portion and he'll moderate it, but he'll stop it because you're not officially there yet. You still struggle with anxiety, lust, fear, worry. You're not perfect in love. You have some uncertainty in your mind about God, what, how he's leading you. You let the cares of this life bother you. You let people occupy your attention and take you off of the Lord Jesus. And you lose your fire, your enthusiasm. You don't keep your fire burning. Saints, after I gave Zendaya that portion, she rested in my arms. And I said, Zendaya, You don't want to stay up a little while longer? She said, Daddy, I'm so tired. She entered into rest because I, as her father, supplied her with sweetness. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing to your life right now. As you honor him, and you make those steps towards pleasing his will daily for you. You're aiming at how you want me to handle myself, how you want me to talk, how you want me to act. There is a sweetness that he has for you financially, in your health, in your mind, in your relationships, in your provision, in your living arrangements. That will usher you in into a new glory dimension of rest. Money is on God's mind all the time to give to you. He owns all money. Remember, he revealed to Haggai the prophet, the silver and the gold is mine. The silver and the gold is mine. He revealed that to Haggai. The silver and the gold is mine. God owns everything. In the book of Psalms, he said, even if I was hungry, I want to tell you. Remember, he, he prophesied through David. He said, if I'm hungry, I won't even tell you. Because he is the richest person in existence. The Holy Spirit is the richest person in this earth realm, on planet earth right now. And imagine when he's leading and guiding you, he guides you into your wealthy place. He guides you into your riches. He guides you into your finances. He guides you into your provision. Keep your eyes open to things that the Holy Spirit want to tweak in your personality. Let it go. Whether it be ego, whether it be short-tempered, whether it be uh, anger, whether it be anxiety, whether it be lust, whether it be flirtation, whether it be fear, whether it be anxiety attacks, whether it be worry, overthinking, whether it be stress. Stress is so demonic, so demonic. Stress is so demonic. And remember, I told you, stress is a demon that messes up your digestive system. Stress messes up your insides. Stress, just stress alone, your blood to stop flowing. Stress will cause your blood to stop flowing correctly. So you got to let go of stress. Let the Spirit of God make tweaks. Isaac let the Spirit of God make tweaks in his personality, in his focus, because he got fearful. He let the Holy Spirit make tweaks. And then here is the richest time of Isaac's life. Isaac stepped into a money tsunami of God. God began to reveal his plan to give Isaac money in Genesis 26. But there was a confrontation with him and the Lord and the Lord had to show him, you have stuff inside of you that's demonic. You're not following in the ways of Abraham. And I can't get the blessing to you, even though that's your father. I can't flow with him like I flow. I can't flow with you like I flow with him. I need to tweak some things on you. And when Isaac listened to the Lord, see, only when you obey the word that God gives you, can you invoke change in yourself. Psalm 119 verse 9, how could a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed according to the word of God. When Isaac let the Lord make tweaks in his personality, his character, the way that he perceived things, when he adapted to the, the, the culture of Abraham, there's a divine Christ culture. There's a Christ culture. And Abraham 
was the culture for Isaac. He had to learn the culture of his father, which is submission to God, listening to instruction, sowing seed, honoring God. You notice when he immersed himself in the culture of his dad, Abraham, he went back to the follow ground. He broke up the follow ground. He went back to his foundation, his culture, his background. The blessing history month. The blessing history month. He went back to his father, his deliverer. And when he immersed himself in the spirit of his father, he went back to the seed and here come money cometh. Here come restoration in his life. Here come his enemies being made a footstool. Here come God exalting him and making his name great. Here come God increasing him and expanding him. He had to return back to seed sowing. Saints, I'm gonna tell you like this here. When I was young, my mother taught me how to sow, but saints, as you go through life, you could be a teenager, you could forget stuff, you could think you're a teenager, but I always read the word, I always spoke with the Lord, but I, I, I intensified that sowing anointing as I got older. I started sowing larger measures because I had more money on me. I told you, I never forget when I was going to high school, our high school was gang infested and I ministered to... Uh, a lot of people in that high school. And um, I was doing evangelism there. And I had the influence to do it. Because you know I'm not weird. You know, I'm not weird. Like, sometimes people say that they're walking with the Lord, but they're weird. And then they use Jesus as a crutch. Because Jesus is is popping. But, you know, you, you get around them, they're weird. You know, they're goofy. They don't got no personality like they, and, and that's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the most interesting person. So I was able to do it because I, I have charisma. I have influence. But in that high school, I remember when money started moving towards me in supernatural ways. And I was seeking the Lord. Even in high school, I would fast Saturday and Sunday. When they eat no food and water every Saturday and Sunday. And it's like, I'm seeking the Lord. I'm not in no relationship with no woman. I don't got no girlfriend. I ain't got time for the... Beep! I ain't had no time for you crazy. I ain't had no children. I ain't had no activities. I wasn't going in the locker room. With company. <laughs> and and that was my focus as a young man, seeking the Lord. Now I remember having another encounter with the Lord when I was in high school. And I was sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing. And the seed brought me into wisdom. The seed brought me into wealth. The seed brought me into favor. The seed brought me into greatness. Do you understand Dr. Mike Murdoch has raised more money in television than anybody? Do you know that? Do you understand that they're still playing Dr. Mike Murdoch stuff just to gain millions of dollars to their ministries? Do you know that? Do you know that Dr. Mike Murdoch has raised billions of dollars in Christian television? I got connected to Dr. Mike Murdoch through the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. And you always tell the Lord, thank you for every person he connects you with. You always give glory to God for his planning. You never forget the Lord thy God because it's him that's giving you the power to get well. Let me say this to you. Deuteronomy 111, the thousandfold blessing is real powerful. I remember when I started sowing into the thousandfold scripture, my whole life began to change. When you recognize that scriptures are carrying seed names, my God, did you catch that? Scriptures are carrying themes for your seed, titles for your seed. When you start sowing and you got a scripture that you meditate on, you are watering the seed. And, and meditation, the word of God, speaking the word, but also praising God. 
When you rejoice before God is the easiest path into the harvest being expedited. When you rejoice before the Lord, that's the Joshua principle. All the walls come tumbling down. Rejoicing before the Lord and giving him praise. A sower must become a trumpet, become an instrument, a music unto God. Some of y'all like listening to music. Well, God has been looking to listen to the music of your deeds and your praise and your gratitude. And as you give him glory, the harvest cometh. Money cometh is a real anointing. God firstly imparted the money cometh revelation to Apostle Leroy Thompson. That is his special mantle. But see, he was he's the, the the first fruit and the firstborn of the money cometh. But he understands that as well. Apostle Leroy Thompson is 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 very prophetic. He understands that there are people that God has extended his legacy through. And so I had an encounter in 2015 while I was inside of my apartment. Pastor Leroy Thompson came in my room and threw his, he threw a cloak that he had on his shoulders on me. And we laughed for what seemed like 30 minutes, but it wasn't 30 minutes. It was longer than that because I was, had transpired. But in the heavenly realm, things seem like it's quick. Um, also, I saw Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin was the spiritual, uh, no, not spiritual. Kenneth Hagin was the father of Apostle Leroy Thompson. Apostle Leroy Thompson served Kenneth Hagin fully. And he was faithful. He stuck right by him. When you are sowing seed, God places mantles of men of God of old on you. He places ancient anointings on you and they flow on you fresh. He places the abilities, the spirit of men of God and women of God of old on you. Some seasons you'll function as Esther. Some seasons you'll function as the Queen of Sheba. Some seasons you'll function as Bathsheba. Many people don't understand Bathsheba. She wasn't a piece of meat. But, but I ain't saying that. Man. But Bathsheba was a wise woman. If you look at what Solomon said, he was saying that he listened to the words of his mother in the book of Proverbs. She had a wisdom anointing. She flowed with David. She was powerful. <laughs> body and brains, body and brains, body and brains. Some seasons you'll function as Bathsheba. <laughs> Some seasons you'll function <laughs> As Mary, some seasons you'll function as Elizabeth, Sarah. Some seasons you'll function as Samson, Samuel. You'll function as David. You'll function as Solomon. You'll function as there are about several men say, yeah, give me that Solomon. Give me this. The seed allows God to place ancient mantles on you and you'll find yourself flowing as a person of pleasure. You'll bring pleasure to who you're assigned to. You'll bring problem solving to who you're assigned to. You'll be a blessing to them and God will use you in miracles. He'll enhance your fruit. He'll increase your ability to bear fruit and you'll bear more fruit. You'll be able to do more because the spirit of someone that had a specialized ability is now on you. God honors you when you're honoring him. 
When your seed sowing, he invests his mantles on your life so that you could do extra supernatural ability, uh, 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 supernatural works, and you'll have supernatural rewards attached to them. The seed is the answer to living in the success of God throughout your life on earth. Saints, the hundredfold is not just for heaven. In Mark chapter 10, Jesus said, I'll give you a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. Houses, lands, prosperity, family, he dealt with it all. Saints, receive your hundredfold from Jesus. The cross of Christ linked you to experience all the inheritance that you're supposed to receive in this life. The cross of Christ made it possible for you to be restored fully with what belongs to you. There's healing in the cross of Christ. And remember, the cross would not be effective without the seed on it. Jesus was the best seed of the Father sown attached to the cross. You got to understand when you're seed sowing, you're attaching yourself to the cross. You're aligning yourself with victory. You're telling Satan, I will not live a destructive life. I will not live an embarrassing life. I will not lack. I will not lose. I will listen. I will loose all my provision and I will walk in the brilliance of God, the blessing of God. When you are seed sowing, you're attaching the Jesus realm to your conditions. You're attaching Yeshua, the salvation of God, to your finances. And saints, remember, the children of Israel, he brought them out. He saved them. But how did he save them? He demonstrated a financial restoration to their life. I'm telling you right now as you're watching me, abundance Total abundance is arriving in your life. You have to see it. Lord, thank you for total abundance in my life. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you for total abundance in my life. Lord, thank you for taking care of me. Lord, thank you for feeding me. You need to start talking like that to the Lord. Prepare yourself for the wealth of God. Because when his wealth cometh, it's, it's like a river that can't be stopped. Nobody could stop the channels of his wealth when you're listening to his voice. This is the time where you will break the generational curse of lack. And you'll live in the wealth plan of the spirit. This is for the sower. If you're not sowing, you're deceived. You're missing out. On God's will. Do you know when you're not sowing seed, your life stops. Ain't nothing moving. Remember, your future is just you reaping what you sowed. When you're not sowing into God, you can't reap nothing from God. So you're, 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 you're going to experience an entry into your life, but it's not from the gates of heaven. It's from the gates of hell. And those are things that you don't like. Then you got to spend the rest of your future trying to play catch up. Lord, deliver me from this. Lord, deliver me from this when you could just sow and reap for the rest of your life. The reaping anointing is where you get to live good. And saints, I'm going to tell you like this. When you're a sower, God want to take you on vacations. God wants you to rest. He wants you to enjoy yourself. When you're a sower, God want to feed you steak. He want to feed you good. He want to take care of you. He want to bless you. He want to make you laugh. He want to give you pleasure. He want to be intimate with you. When you're a sower, God want intimacy with you. He want to be one with you. He want to he want to feel you. He wants you to feel him. He want to touch you. He wants you to touch him. He want he want to hear you. He wants you to hear him. He want to converse with you. He wants you to converse with him. He want to hug you. He wants you to hug him. He want to kiss you. He wants you to kiss him. When you are sore, God wants to baby you because you're babying him as your soul. You recognize him as your God. This is your portion. This is your portion. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We give you a hand clap of praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give you a hand clap of praise for this mighty dimension of your kingdom 
that has been graciously given. And I speak this upon you this day in Jesus' name. I speak it. We give you glory. Now, angels, go forth and minister. Go forth and minister to all the children of righteousness. Go forth and minister to the children of light. I release the glory of angelic ministry. I release the glory of cherubims right now to minister to all my partners right now in the name of Jesus. We give you a wave offering, Lord. We give you a wave offering. See, some of y'all not familiar with this. We give you a wave offering. We give you a wave offering. See, in the Old Testament, they used to give God a wave offering. They used to clap their hands. They used to praise and they used to do stuff. People have drifted away from the reality of God's spirit. But we give you praise, Lord. We give you a wave offering. We lift up our hands and we wave to you. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. See, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm showing you some things on here. I'm showing you some things. And I received a hundredfold. I received a thousandfold for my life. Now. The Lord is feeding me and I'm receiving the blessing and the benefits of God without measure. 